Uh, my name is my name is Nick Chinoulis. I'm the director of investigations for the Department of Business Affairs Consumer Protection. Uh, the others here that are going to assist in the presentation: Sherry Cianciarulo, assistant commissioner with the Department of Business Affairs Consumer Protection; Adam Weller, Miguel Campos from we're all from our Department of Business Affairs Consumer Protection. We got Joe Flores from Finance Tax Division, Lane Herman also from Finance Ta Tax Division, and Melissa Binger from Health the Health Department. What well, we just basically always want to talk about is, of course, there's been a lot of changes with the tobacco laws this year. We're going to kind of go over some things, uh, give out some definitions, and at the end of the presentation, if you have any questions, you feel free to ask us. Okay. Uh, let's go to the first one here. What is a tobacco product? Um, takes on a lot of definitions nowadays. Uh, according to per city ordinance, it's municipal code 464-091, a tobacco product is any product in leaf, flake, plug, liquid, or any other form containing nicotine derived from tobacco. Which product is intended to enable human consumption of tobacco or nicotine? Whether chewed, smoked, absorbed, dissolved, inhaled, snorted, sniffed, or ingested by any other means. Uh, we're talking about nicotine product produced from, a t from tobacco. Tobacco accessories means cigarette papers or wrappers, pipes, holders of smoking materials of all types, cigarette rolling machines, and the other, other item designed primarily for smoking or ingestion of tobacco products. We had a case recently where a guy was selling pipes and he uh, primarily used for smoking uh, hookah and, and, all, and any and forms of tobacco. He felt he didn't need a tobacco license. Because it's a tobacco accessory, we told him he, had, he needed one. He was required to have one. Um, the next tobacco sales restriction, that's the distance on, uh, on a place that's uh, no person shall give away, sell, barter, exchange, or deal in tobacco products in any place within 100 feet of any building or other location used primarily as a school, child care facility, or for the education and recreation of children 18. That's a that's a hundred feet uh, boundary property property boundary lines. It's not door to door. It's the property boundary of each uh, of the business next to the school. Um, Another new thing we've had, we have now is when any tobacco license is issued or revoked for any cause, no retail tobacco license or like tobacco product sample license shall be granted for such a period of one year. If you, if you get your license revoked, uh, you won't, you'll, you'll be out of business for one year as far as tobacco sales goes. Uh, next, next one are the types of tobacco licenses. And the fees, I'm sure you guys know what the fees are. Tobacco retail to tobacco dealer over the counter, $550 per location, $330 for each register selling tobacco. Um, the sampler license is the second one. I don't, I don't think we have anybody in here that does that. Um, and wholesale tobacco dealer, $1,100 per operator, two year term. These are the three main types of uh, tobacco dealer licenses. Excuse me. These are changes. We got changes effective already January 1st, and we have changes effective in, Ju in July. Non renewal of tobacco licenses that, that became effective January 1st. Increased fines for tobacco violations. In some cases, it doubled. Uh, and they, they, they amended the state statute regarding felony charges. If you have over 250 packs of unstamped cigarettes, and that means now that the amendment part is if they're if they're unstamped, meaning they don't have the the stamp of that jurisdiction, then if you have more than 250, you could be arrested for a felony uh, felony charge. I think it's a four charge, three three or four. I forget one of which one it is, but and and of course the, the cigarettes are confiscated. We'll get into that later. New ordinance 
464-245, city now can decline to renew your tobacco license if within 24 month period, you've been found liable of any combination of three or more of the following violations. Our guys go into your shop, if we get you for unstamped cigarettes, the city stamp, county stamp, that's the first one up here. Uh, you go in, you're supposed to have books and records open available to the investigators. If you don't do that, it's a violation there. Mutilation of tax stamps is exactly what it says. You can't scratch them off or try and, some guys used to the old days, they'd peel half it off and put one on another pack of cigarettes. You can't do that. Uh, cooperation with inspections, you gotta allow the investigators to conduct the tobacco inspections in your business. Uh, you have to you have to open up cabinets, drawers, everything else. You have to shoot wherever you they there there's a possibility of cigarettes you have to show them. Um, again, there's a record keeping charge here. Got again must show the upon demand by the investigator inspector. You have to show the, the record keeping of your tobacco, where you buy this tobacco from, who's the wholesaler, blah blah blah. Tobacco sales of minors. Big problem, we have teams that go out and do it all year long. We send in a minor age uh, kid, put him in your store, see if you sell a cigarette. Um, warning sign of minors, you gotta have the, the warning sign. We have, we have some over here, in case any of you guys need one, you can take a couple of them. Uh, it's also on the city website, you can uh, open up the link and print, print one of those signs. And ID cards, uh, <coughs> ID cards are for if the minor is, if you're accepting bad ID cards, I think, what, what is that exactly, is that what that is? Something yeah. about if, if, uh, if you're accepting ID cards that are faulty or not state regulated, mm -hmm. I think that's what it is, that's a new one that they just added. Okay. All right, back to the non-renewal of the tobacco licenses. If the city's denying your renewal, you will get a letter 45 days before the license expires telling you that. Within 10 days of receiving the letter, you, you, can make a, you, you can make a written request for the mayor's office to appeal that decision. And uh, until, unless, unless the decision is changed, your license is expired. This is the letter of the non-renewal. And if the city sends you, telling you that your license is not gonna be renewed, it's the letter you'll receive. And once upon receipt of that, you got 10 days of file on appeal. Uh, effects of non renewal. So if you don't get your license renewed, any person who is not renewed is ineligible for a new tobacco license at that location. Disqualification applies to other entities the eligible person owns or has an interest in. Again, it's at that location. Whatever the address is, you had the license not renewed. And of course, a parents, child, sibling, spouse, anybody related to the person is also, it's, it's to stop people from, you know, okay, I, Nick Janu's got his license re, not renewed, my wife's going to take over the business now. It's to stop that stuff. Okay. <clears throat> Increased fines we talked about earlier. Sales to back with a minus thousand for the first violation. Fine rate 2500 5000 Most of these fines have been doubled since last year. Generally speaking, in, in the tobacco ordinance under 4-64, all those violations are 200,000 for the first violation and 250 to 1,000 for each subsequent violation within a 24 month period. And the bottom two are for unstapped tobacco. This one, this was an increase last year. $2,000 for 40 or few, fewer packs for the first violation more than 40 packs, it's $50 per pack after that, okay? So it's costly that to, to deal in the unstamped cigarettes. Plus, of course, you take the, the cigarettes are confiscated from you. This is the felony tobacco chart I told you about. Cigarettes that are improperly tax stamped, including cigarettes that bear a tax stamp of another state or taxing jurisdiction, or lack of a tax stamp required by any political subdivision. Again, it used to be it wasn't a felony if you had 1,000 packs of cigarettes from Missouri or Kentucky. They have to have, now it's a felony if you don't have the correct 
jurisdiction that the cigarettes are being sold in. So in this case, in the city, city of Chicago, it's got a city of Chicago and county uh, tax stamp on it. Okay, class four felony for two fifty one. I was right about that. A thousand or more. It's class three three felonies. It's a pretty serious uh, offense nowadays. You risk, you know, besides losing your cigarettes, you lose your license, and you risk going to jail on it. This is the big one that's hit everybody. We were talking about it earlier. Effective changes on July first. These are changes coming up. Minor, the minor age increased to twenty one. You got to, you got to be twenty one to buy purchase back cigarettes in Chicago. Um, they, they, we've, they also say it's also great taxes imposed on it's called other tobacco products OTB OTP um, record keeping again it's record keeping required for that revocation now we know of two more violations for single cigarettes that's different than what I, what I said earlier it's two or more violations of single cigarettes in a, in a 48 month period so if you if you're caught selling cigarettes, loose Lucy's or whatever you want to call it, twice in within 48 months, you're going to get your license revoked or re renewed, not renewed, revoked. And the last part, tobacco price floors, they're not in effect yet unless the the other tobacco products uh, tax is struck down by the courts. That's in litigation right now. Okay. Again, legal smoking age increases uh, January 1st. You have to be 21 to purchase cigarettes. Employees age 18 and older may still sell cigarettes if you're, if they're, if you're employing them. Then a new warning sign must be posted in stores that have a retail tobacco license beginning of July 1st. That's good. It's a new warning sign that says 21, okay? I think our signs say that, right? Yeah, okay. Other tobacco products that we talked about include cigars, pipes, pipe tobacco, smokeless tobacco, and smoking tobacco. Um, if this if if this passes, it is it, it's going to be effective July first. But if it, if it doesn't pass, then the the uh, the tech, the prices for the uh, cigarettes will be set by the city. Again, every person uh, responsible has to keep accurate uh, books and records. That's for any any uh, tobacco violation. All to single, single cigarettes. <laughs> All tobacco products must be sold in the original factory <clears throat> packaging, except for cigars and pipe tobacco. No cigarette sales. We we know that that's a that's a sing, uh, sales single cigarette charge. Fines will be increased. To one thousand to five thousand for first offense, and twenty five hundred ten thousand for second and subsequent offense. A lot of those, the, the the issues with single cigarettes came up. I know at some of these meetings, a lot of police commanders were telling us that it, the guy selling cigarettes on the corners, uh, creating a, a appearance of it looks like drug sales, creates a lot of problems. So that's why there's a kind of serious crackdown. So it's not just the guy on the outside. Of course, it's the guys on the inside. Uh, store owners are selling cigarettes too. Okay, two or more violations within a 48 month period may result in That's for, again for sale of single cigarettes. Okay, tobacco. Like I said earlier, the tobacco price floors that the, that they had talked about, like eleven dollar fifty cents for a pack of cigarettes, they'll only be imposed if the if the other tobacco product tax is struck down by the courts. So we'll, that's a wait and see thing on that. So there's no there's no price for us as of yet for tobacco. Uh, effective October 10, 2016, all coupons and discounts on tobacco products are banned. Um, I don't know if any of you guys deal with coupons, but they'll no longer be accepted in Chicago uh, starting October 10th. Violation of this can lead to re revocation or <coughs> non-renewal. These are the last couple of pages that are real, I think they're most important in, in operating your, your tobacco retail business. Uh, it's kind of like a, some of it's repetitive of what we talked about. Sales sampling, barring, exchange tobacco products to minors illegal, and the minor age increases to 21. And we know that, right? Licenses must, licensees must post tobacco warning signs on in a visible location. Gotta be able to see it. The customer has to be able to see the sign. Uh, 
Morning, we decided to kind of have, have state this. Um, again, we have signs here. It, this one includes the under the age of 21. All tobacco and tobacco products must be stored and sold from behind the counter except for retail tobacco stores. You can't have self-service in a, in, a, in a normal uh, shop. You cannot do that. It's got to be behind the counter. I remember years ago when you could do the <coughs> sale of single loose cigarettes or bitty cigarettes is illegal. Uh, it's illegal for any retail tobacco dealer to purchase, receive, possess, or sell cigarettes unless the package containing cigarettes bears an unmutilated city of Chicago Cook County tax stamp. Okay, they have to have tax stamp. We got teams out there every day doing it. Tobacco licensees shall keep a book and maintain an up to date record in English about the purchase of cigarettes, including name and address. This is what I keep saying record keeping is important. Probably every place that we inspect for tobacco, we write the charge for not producing records and books. It happens everywhere. Um, so they, you, need to, you need, to, need to do that. It's unlawful for any retail or wholesale tobacco dealer to conceal illegal cigarettes. If I told you all the years that we've found cigarettes, the places we found cigarettes, unstamped illegal cigarettes, you wouldn't believe it in urinals, in floors, in steel doors, um, in walls, ceilings. Now we're finding them, the, the bad dealers are keeping them in their cars outside, keeping them on a, you know, on a, public, on a public street, their cars parked on the street. They're, they're hiding them there. They're hiding them, you have a coat on, they'll have a coat on a chair, they'll have four or five packs in the sleeves. I mean, it, you can't conceal them. That's, another, that's why this charge came up a few years ago. Uh, it's, a, it's a violation to conceal that, and if, if you're caught, uh, again, that's what, that counts towards your uh, not getting your license renewed. Concealment, again, means deliberately hidden to prevent or evade. That's what we do. Licensees and their agents may not close and lock safe doors and other doors when an authorized city ins investigator has identified himself. That's what I said earlier. Investigator comes in with the Department of Business Affairs. I need to check your tobacco. At that point, 30, you got 30 minutes to have somebody open up all lock safes, drawers, doors, any place that you might be hiding or concealing cigarettes. Okay? All right. And at that point, when they announce your investigation, you have to stop selling any cigarettes. Okay? Oh, that's, and this is the part of the stomach. Within 30 minutes of the arrival of any authorized city inspector charged with the responsibility of inspecting the licensed premises, the licensee shall have a person available on site to open any locked safe or doors where unstamped cigarettes may be hidden. It's a big problem. We write thousands of those tickets a year because nobody knows how to open a safe. Nobody knows who's got the key. And those are the places, those are the bad places. Those are the places that are hiding unstamped, illegal, Cigarettes, contraband cigarettes. I think is that it. Any questions? Feel free to contact our 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 division directly. This is the, we're with the Business Compliance Enforcement Unit. We're at 2350 West Ogden, second floor. You can call our it's a, it's a reception number uh, 743-5185-312. Ask any ask her any the lady any questions you have. She'll, if she can't answer it, she'll get the, one of us to call you back. Um, tobacco enforcement, that's my number. You can call me directly. Thanks to Sherry, you can call me directly. <laughs> she was gonna, she didn't put her name, number down there. Uh, and the, the bottom is, the, the link is, the, you would have gotten that. I think all you guys got the letter, the retail letter. The link, you can go to the link and it, it'll answer any of your questions too. And you can, you can download a, a sign. Um, so it's, I, I've used it myself when they change it. They put all the information in one place, so it's, it's easy to get to. If you need to, if you have any questions, you can go to that too. Um, hey. Wait. That's me. I did it wrong. What did I do here? There you go. Uh, any questions? I mean, something can help you right now.
Yes, sir. You defined uh, tobacco products and you were going through the list. Yeah. In tobacco patches, like the, the, the uh, smoking cessation stuff? No, I, the, I was told, the, I was informed, that's new, that the, anything that's uh, involved smoking cessation approved by the government, uh, it's not considered a tobacco product. Okay. So that would, we would, that's not something we would look at. Yes, sir. We actually don't sell cigarettes at my cigar store, but some of my staff smoke, and they'll, if I'm traveling abroad, we're in carbon smokes that can't get in the States. Yeah. We have that in possession of the shop, just because it's personal use for them, and someone comes in, and just like four packs, are we gonna get dinged, or is that potential? Since we have some cigarettes, even though we technically stop Yeah, I mean, you know. And top, and top of it, it's a public place, right? I mean, it's a retail store, yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah. they're not, they'll be in their personal possession or something, yeah. but it, it, it's usually six packs of smokes. But I can tell them to not keep them in there if we can conceivably. Get I don't know if we there. would, I don't know if we would handle it. I don't know if we would go after the your, your employee, but or even for my business, I just don't want to get, yeah, no, I know. Violations if but, they but, if we, but if we saw them selling a pack, I mean, if well, they don't sell them at all, I'd yeah. fire them immediately. But I'm saying if we bring them back, you know. Some cigarettes came in the states, and they bring it back as a paper and trap them in Nicaragua. Here's some weird smokes, and then <laughs> they keep them laying around the drawer. Like, is that something I could do? I would, I would, if I was you, I would let's leave leave them in drawers. So, stuff. so the law says um, possession. Yeah. That's what I mean. So it's possession. Okay. So, I mean, is it possible that you could be held like uh, responsible for that? Yes. Okay. So, I mean, that would be a bit of business decision. We'd have to. Part. It's it's per. Per location basis, we have to see what if, if the investigators felt that that's what was, that was what was going on. They were selling some of their own cigarettes. I mean, yeah, it'd be uh, that's good enough to ask the question. Yeah, yeah. It'd be an absurd scenario since it'd be available, like yeah. six packs of cigarettes in our entire store. But yeah, they could technically do it. That's what I want to know. We find a lot of places that they have. They say they don't do it, but they they got open packs of cigarettes behind the counter. Different various brands. And they're, well, yeah, selling, and, they're they're selling sing, and they're selling single cigarettes. Okay, well that's that. So it's something that, that, you know. Okay. Yes, sir. The promotion you get from uh, RJ, run a lot of new ports, whatever. Yeah. It's going to be stopped in October for all stories. What is it? What do you, what the you say? The, sam that you the get, samples? No, the promotion. You buy from Sam's Club, let's say. Yeah. And they reimburse you to your account, let's say, five out of the cart. He's referring to the October 10th. Uh, no yeah. Discount. yeah, that's what I thought you said. You can't, yeah, you, you can't offer any discount or samples on you mentioned coupons. I don't know. You can't, you can't, you can't do it. How, how is best for that? Because yeah. It, yeah, it's a prohibition of multi-pack discount. So the kind of like yeah. buy two, get one free. That is along with the, um, the coupon prohibition on October 10th. I think where there's a gray area where a lot of people are, are you have questions on not necessarily multi-pack, mm -hmm. but single pack and they're referred to as buy downs. Okay, in fact that every manufacturer, all the major manufacturers focus on specific brands that my list price if I'm buying from a typical wholesale retailer might be I'll make it up fifty dollars a carton and they'll offer a discount at two dollars a carton so twenty cents off a pack. And every retailer out there practically participates in those programs. Will those be considered to be the discount part on the October 10th? So right now with the OTP tax and the couponing, it's, it's just the multi-pack, I believe. I can look into that just to double check. Um, I don't have the ordinance sitting in front of me, but should the price floors go into effect, then yes. The minimum price is the minimum price, and they'll buy downs. And so, I think one of the questions, uh, one of the things we need to know is um, how does that affect the? So that's the business side of it. And so, how does that affect the consumer? So, if these um, wholesalers are offering these sort of discounts to the business, to the retailer, that's okay. I think it's to the customer. Uh, how does it affect you know. the customer in terms of pricing? Yeah. So if you get a disc on a on a card at two dollars off, are you passing those twenty cent that twenty cent discount per pack to the consumer, or that right. just on your bank? Yeah, you're required to pass it to the consumer. Yes, okay. yes, you do. And well, that's, you, that's every you're required to if you purchase it from the manufacturer. If you buy it from the Sam's Club and you get instant Sam savings or something like that, you're not. We don't require you to pass that on to the consumer. 
No, but, but basically, I mean, the caching period piece, like from a Sam's Club, is a little yeah. bit different. That's a very yeah. small part of thing. If you're buying for any registered wholesaler, McLean, E.B. Brown, any of those, you pay a cost, okay? Yeah. The manufacturer then rebates you a, like Philip Morris, largest one out there, Marlboro. If you're on plan with Marlboro, you're getting $2 off the cart, 20 cents off a pack that you're required to pass on to the consumer. That is not advertised as a promotion or a discount. It's built in if you've got out on your sign $10 a pack, that is inclusive already of that 20 cent discount. It's a hidden, it's a rebate, so. So anyone off the street could go into the store at any given moment and purchase cigarettes at whatever the discount rate is? Every person who purchases a pack will receive that discount. Okay. So we'll get, I mean, so my gut instinct is telling me that it does not apply to the coupon. I think it's more than a coupon, a person who walks into the store with yeah, a coupon. coupons is, is I, I We're all on board with that. It's the discount yeah, part that's right. very gray yeah. because there's many different ways of receiving yeah. those discounts. So I think um, I think at this point um, we're going to sort of talk to health and, and tax um, as BICP, but our instincts are saying no, that wouldn't be part of a coupon because it's your purchase price. It's a lower price, but um, it's not, you know, it's just universal to um, all customers without any sort of coupons or it's just, it's just a promotion. So we'll have something on our website on that. That's a very good question. Yeah. Any other questions? Let's you have to ask the ID for every single customer or? What is it? The, uh, asking the ID for every single customer. No, but you have to make sure that you're not selling to a minor, that's all. That's all. Yeah, there's no rule on that. But it's actually a federal law under the age of 27, you're required to ID. And the, the state law we were earlier talking about, the state 21 bill, mm -hmm. would up the state requirement from 27 to 30. But that's. Well, it's going to make if it passes. Yeah. If it passes. Yeah, when it passes. Okay. Okay. I'm going to turn over to my colleagues from uh, finance, Joe Flores. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Let's Thank talk you. taxes. It's in the car. Yeah. Again, I'm Joe Flores from the tax division. Thank you. Um, I have Elaine as well. I'm the director. Uh, Elaine's an audit manager. Um, today we're here to discuss the two taxes. One that came into effect 1 1 2016, liquid nicotine products. And the other one, which will go into effect 7 1 2016. So, those retailers that are sitting here, you guys should have filed a floor tax return. You guys should be charging your customers the liquid nicotine tax, right? Um, to understand the way the tax works, you have to understand the definition because each definition uh, may or may not have a different tax rate. I'm not going to go into each and every single type of um, tobacco product. We have uh, definitions included in our slides that we can show you, but I'm not going to read it verbatim. Um, you need to understand that a liquid nicotine uh, juice as well as a device, and then there are different um, types of other tobacco products. And we have samples of, of what products fall under each category coming up next. So the tax rates for liquid nicotine is you have the actual product, the, the device itself, which is 80 cents per device, and 55 cents per milliliter uh, inside that device, okay? Uh, for other tobacco products, it's broken down into these categories. Dollar eighty per ounce, dollar eighty per ounce, pipe tobacco sixty per ounce, little and bar cigarettes, twenty cents per cigar. Right, so Elaine's gonna get into your obligation to collect the tax. Um, okay, cool. So for liquid nicotine and other tobacco product tax, you are required to collect it from the consumer. The incidence and obligation for the tax is on the consumer. Um, you should be paying your wholesaler at the time you purchase these products. But if for whatever reason your wholesaler is not collecting the tax, if they don't have nexus here, if you're buying it online, you are required to register with the department and remit it to us directly. Um, just because the wholesaler is not collecting the tax doesn't relieve you of the obligation to collect it from your consumer and remit it directly to the department. So if you're buying online, retailers, um, you have to charge the consumer and you have to give that money to us. And you have to register, okay? 
your tax collection responsibility, failure to remit the collected taxes um, will result in penalties and interest. Um, these taxes, because they are to be collected from the consumer, it's a collected tax, therefore you're required to remit it, and failure to do so will re result in a 50% of failure to remit um, collected tax penalty, in addition to a 25% penalty for failure to file a return with us, and our interest is calculated at the rate of 12% per year to um, calculated daily. If your wholesaler fails to collect the tax, again, you are required to, to register directly with us because you all have retail tobacco licenses. I'm assuming you have an account number with the city of Chicago. So the process to be registered for the tax would be relatively easy. Um, there's information on our website regarding that. Um, so again, if that's something that on any of your purchases, maybe you're, you're purchasing from multiple wholesalers and some of them are collecting and some of them are not, you are required to, to remit the tax directly to us for those that are not. Um, Collecting. Examples, liquid nicotine products. I'm sure you guys are familiar with these. Smoking tobacco. Again, you have to refer back to the rates. Smokeless tobacco, pipe tobacco, little cigars, large cigars, price floor. Price floor. As Nick mentioned, um, currently there is no price floor, but if the OTP tax gets repealed and it doesn't go into effect as of July 1st this year, as it's expected to, the price floors will go into effect. The resources that we have available, um, we're on the City of Chicago website under Department of Finance. The tax division has its own homepage. <coughs> on that homepage, there's a link to our tax division FAQs, and included in our FAQs is the registration process, um, how you would go about it, submitting an affidavit to, to register for the tax, uh, we have links to be able to pay and file online. If you are registered for a tax with us, our payments are due the 15th day of the following month. So payment for September would be due October 15th. Our returns are on a fiscal year, running from July through June. Um, so they're due by August 15th, um, following that fiscal year. Um, effective January 1st of this year, all returns are required to be filed online. So if you are registered remitting with us, you should be filing online. Um, just another note about the floor tax return. If you are selling liquid nicotine products, um, you were required to file a floor tax return by January 25th of this year, and failure to do so could result in a hold on your license. So if you are required to do so and you haven't done so, I would strongly encourage you to, to file that return. And it's available again on our, our tax division homepage. Uh, if you have any additional questions, our contact center can be reached at 312-747-4747 or you can send an email to revenue database at city of Chicago. So we included definitions in there. I'm not going to read them verbatim. Um, take a quick pause for any questions. I have one question. Yes. I'm going the wholesaler and I'm paying the tax there. I don't have to worry about registering with the city. Don't Correct. Have to but you have to charge the tax to the consumer. Correct. But the I'm not going to keep a record of what's going on. Like one of your right. Right. Okay. All right. yeah, I act as a wholesaler and a retailer, um, specifically for OTP stuff. So since we won't be paying on invoice, we'll collect it and then we're then it based on our sales, correct? Correct. So we yeah. the month after we sell it. So the same with the county with the state of Illinois essentially. That's okay. Okay. Any other questions? Cool. I'm fast forward a bit to help. Thank you. So my name is Melissa, I'm from the Department of Public Health. Uh, you've heard a lot of details about these new changes. I'm just gonna give a little bit of background on what some of the goals um, for these new tobacco reforms are. Um, so Mayor Emanuel has a vision for uh, creating a, a city where tobacco-free youth um, is a reality. Um, 
and we at the health department could not agree more. Uh, tobacco use is the leading cause of preventable death in the United States, taking nearly half a million lives each year. Um, so we feel very strongly about this, and the mayor has made it a health priority to reduce youth tobacco use through a variety of sales and price regulations, um, expanding access to smoke and tobacco-free places, um, as well as launching educational and informational campaigns to educate youth about tobacco products. So in the past decade or so, um, the news has been, has been pretty good around cigarette smoking. Youth cigarette smoking in Chicago has been steadily decreasing. Um, the year where we have the most recent data, 2013, um, we saw historic lows for youth smoking. Uh, the rate was at 10.7%, whereas in 2001, it was at 24.7%. So that's a pretty huge uh, decrease and significant process, uh, progress from where, from you know, our standpoint. Um, but there are some concerning trends. Uh, so we do not have local e-cigarette uh, data for youth, but nationally, um, these emerging products um, are just exploding with kids. So between 2011 and 2014, it was a, something like a tenfold increase in the number of youth reporting that they're using. Uh, e-cigarettes, vapor products, liquid nicotine products. Um, so, you know, this is a concern for us as um, public health professionals. So in response to, um, you know, keeping the progress going on reducing youth tobacco use and then dealing with some of these emerging products, since taking office in 2011, uh, the mayor has implemented um, some you know, regula new regulations. And, you know, that chart where everything was trending downward, I could give you know, both the national, state, and local context um, for each of those years that, that have led to those reductions, but that is for a much longer workshop. But um, just some highlights locally um, in the last few years. Uh, the cigarette tax increase of 50 cents that was passed in 2013. Um, also in 2013, uh, sales of flavored tobacco products, including menthol cigarettes, were prohibited within 500 feet of schools. So those retailers that are impacted by that, um, those flavored restrictions have been notified and know about that. It may or may not apply to folks in this room right now. Um, also in line with the expanding access to smoke and tobacco free places, uh, smoke free parks and beaches, um, smoke free colleges, and also smoke free um, Chicago Housing Authority buildings are all areas where we've seen progress in the last few years. Um, and for e-cigarette specific um, issues, uh, e-cigarettes have been included in the Clean Indoor Air Ordinance uh, to, so along with cigarettes that can't be used in public places, restaurants, bars, et cetera. And then the liquid nicotine tax, which you just heard about from the tax folks. Um, so you've, again, you've heard a lot about the new tobacco control policy, so I won't belabor the details of that, um, but the goal of these new policies is to is taking direct aim at um, reducing youth use. Um, youth are very responsive to price increases for tobacco products. Um, research shows that increasing the age to 21, and this is something going around, on around the country, um, and as we've mentioned, you know, the state is looking at it as well. Um, you know, we'll see significant declines over time in youth smoking and in the end, you know, a reduction in deaths from smoking as those youth do not then transition to be adult smokers. Um, so these changes are really going to help us reach our goal of tobacco for youth in Chicago and ensure that kids here in Chicago can lead healthier, longer, and tobacco free lives. Um, so that was just a, a brief, you know, background on what the goals of this are. If you have any questions, I did get the text of the ordinance. I could read out the section on the discounting, but as I thought, it, would, it specifically mentions multi-pack discounts. But um, if anybody has any other questions. Yep. I just saw the sign for 500 feet from the school, but really we had 100 feet? So the 500 is for flavored tobacco products, and the 100 is for all tobacco products. And something came up yesterday, we, we dealt with it, 
where a business was selling, they had a tobacco license, but they were selling Newport menthol cigarettes. And they were within 500 feet of the school. Menthols, which I wasn't sure of myself, is now part of that flavored van. So, I mean, it's a popular cigarette. I know everybody smokes it, but if you're within 500 feet of a school, you really can't sell menthol cigarettes. Federally, it's not considered a flavor. In Chicago, that's part of the confusion with it. Yeah, yeah, that I, you rewrite some of the. It surprised me when I when I found out about it. I really and, yeah. and while you're on the topic of flavors with it, it becomes very difficult, especially in the B sector, to define what is a flavor. The obvious ones are great cherry things. And they say chocolate nature. cherry. Yeah. Right. right. But when you Butter get down to other things, and you can call it a sweet or a diamond or whatever, they're not flavors added. Right. So and even in the wholesale community, no one is really sure what products that applies to and what products they don't. So we do have a list available at www.flavoredtobaccosearchengine.org. Uh, it's a searchable list where we've compiled the flavored products that we can find and, and as new products come out we will um, you know, look into those. So in our regulations, which I also don't have a copy of right now, but it lays out some criteria for, for how we will determine, and, you know, in some of those cases where it's, you know, like supercharged, is that a flavor? Oftentimes on certain websites, you can find a description where it becomes very clear that this is a product that is meant to taste like cherry. It's just called supercharged. So. Um, again, I don't have those regulations, but they're available um, on our website, uh, cityofchicago.org slash health. If you go to the, um, there's a rules and regulations section at the bottom of the page. So. And I know obviously you guys didn't do the ordinance, right, but is there a reason why there was not a grandfather clause on that? Um, <clears throat> Grandfather, well, so as far as if you were in clients, whatever, and all of a sudden someone opens up, you've been there five years, and now someone opens up four months ago, and now all of a sudden you're prevented from selling. Well, like, what are you, are you saying a school or something? Yeah, something but, like but day, daycares are the big things because the definition of a daycare you could be watching three kids in your apartment, apartment right. can be a licensed daycare facility. Well, daycares aren't included, yeah, so. Um, they're not included? In the flavor regulations. It's just um, uh, public and private, elementary, middle, and high schools. Schools, right. With current enrollment. So if a school, a private school might be closed for a year, and you know, if that is the case, you know, that ban would be overturned. Sometimes schools are coming in and out of Okay, when the school is open and is within our other If there's a school that's open, it's within a daycare. A daycare. Daycares are not included. Okay. So if it's a, a daycare, a preschool, or like a kindergarten only facility. Okay, there's another question. If I want to open a, a new uh, site, because I don't want to get your license, they say if it's 500 feet, it's only you because once you get your license, you know, you pay your money, you can't get it back. Is that true? There is a, uh, we instituted a new policy. So there's a, before you open, you can ask for a pre, uh, we work on a pre tobacco measurement inspection. So what happens is you pay for us to go out and measure and we'll let you know ahead of time, you're not gonna be able to sell tobacco products at all or flavor tobacco products. And if you, uh, uh, so you'll know before you get a lease, before you, uh, like actually hire employees that start buying merchandise, you'll know ahead of time that you're not going to be able to get or be able to sell flavored tobacco or tobacco products there at all. If you decide to follow through with your application anyways, then that will get deducted from your application fee. Yeah. And if not, you're just paying us a minimal fee, not the whole amount of the license cost. How much is the minimal fee? Uh, I don't know what it is off the top of my head. $250. Yeah, $250, and we'll measure and let you know before you sign a lease whether you're going to be able to sell regular tobacco products and flavored tobacco products. So you'll know before you 
But it's it's not refundable, right? I mean, yeah, the, the two the fee the two hundred fifty dollars. It'll get rolled over to your application fee if you do get a license. But if you don't get the a license, then that, that yeah, it, yeah, it's for administrative costs, and someone actually has to go out and do the measurements. Mm -hmm. So that fee, and then of itself, won't be refunded. Okay, thank you.